Well, quite frankly, I think it's the biggest issue uh, to hit the mainline churches, or to hit the church, period, since the Reformation. Uh, I do not think that a uh, issue that's more well-defined in Scripture, more strongly held in Scripture, more clearly held in Scripture, it, there's no other case where such an issue is uh, being disregarded uh, by the church today. And in fact, the opposite of what Scripture advocates is being promoted as a good. We've never really had anything quite like this in the past few centuries. Let's look at the way he describes discipleship. Not as a bed of roses, not as satisfying our own personal innate desires, but rather as crucifying ourselves, taking up our cross, denying ourselves, taking ourselves off the throne of life, and no longer living for ourselves, but for the one who loved us enough to redeem us. And the church needs now to reconvert its energies from approving a behavior that runs against the will of God to directing it to helpful and constructive ways for those who live in sexual loneliness, heterosexual and homosexual alike. In the end, we look at God not as some sort of cosmic sadist, getting his jollies from watching us suffer. C.S. Lewis, we get this from, right? He tells us this isn't what God is like. But rather, God is like the great plastic surgeon, only God's not interested in mere cosmetic surgery. God is interested in deep tissue surgery, and he wants by any means necessary to transform us into the image of Jesus. This is what the sexuality debate is about. May God show this to the church and transform us all from within, not only those who suffer from sexual sin, but those who suffer from any besetting sin in any walk of life.